Hello, everyone. Welcome to VTN, the Victory Television Network, and thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. For the last several days, we've been talking about our topic, Confronting Satan. Do you have the authority and the power to confront Satan? Are you afraid to confront him? How do you do this, and what's the purpose of it? Stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. <clears throat> yes, we do have the authority and the power to confront Satan. We know he's a fallen being. He's a fallen spirit. He's an archangel that was thrown out of heaven, cast to the earth. Jesus said he saw him fall as lightning from heaven. Jesus told his disciples that they had the authority and the power to turn on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We read the first few chapters of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles or the Acts of the Holy Spirit, whatever you prefer. And it showed us how the power of the name of Jesus was revered and respected all through the land in the days of the apostles. They gave heed to and respect to the name of Jesus. Demons bow their knee. And I want you to know that you have not only the power and authority, but any opportunity that you have to confront Satan, you should. You have the power and the authority backed by the throne of God. Jesus gave you power and a, of attorney uh, to stand against all principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and wicked spirits. And I'm going to deal with that today in our closing remarks about the topic confronting Satan. Many times we do not know what is behind the problem, the sickness, the disease, the attack. Sometimes it's natural events. Jesus told us that there was nothing, or Paul told us that there was nothing that had ever confronted man, but such as was common to man. If you live in this fallen world, Jesus said you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. A lot of times we make mountains out of molehills and we try to blame God for things that happen to us or our friends or our family. You have to know the word of God to know the difference. Where is this attack coming from? What is this obstacle I'm facing? Is this God or is this the devil? Well, I always like to simplify it. You get your yellow pad and you draw a line down the middle of it and you put on one side everything that steals, kills, and destroys and you put on the other side of it <laughs> everything that is blessing you coming in and blessing you going out. The blessing side is God. The stealing, killing inside is, is the devil. There is no bad or evil in God, and there is no good or goodness in the devil. Satan came for one reason only, to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So once you get that figured out and you realize, aha, this may not just be uh, a common sickness among men. Uh, this must or could be uh, a work of evil spirits. This could be demonic in nature. And so once you discern which is which, then you have the tools and the knowledge of how to deal with each of them. Everything that happens to you is not God's will. Everything that happens to you is not God. Uh, I know there are people that believe that. They believe that everything that happens to them is uh, uh, God's choice, God's choosing and nothing could happen to you if God didn't okay it. And they usually quote Romans 8, 28, uh, where all things work together for good, those that are called of God, and, his, and love is appearing. So there, there are ways for you to manipulate words to fit your narrative, what you want to believe. But if you want to go strictly by the scriptures, uh, then that's going to give you the foundation, the truth that you need uh, to know uh, what to do. I remember a story that Smith Wigglesworth uh, told 
Smith Wigglesworth was identified as our champion of faith. Um, Smith Wigglesworth lived in the early 1800s. Uh, Lester Sumrall, a, a friend of mine, was a friend of Smith Wigglesworth. And Lester Sumrall used to tell me about Mr. Wigglesworth. And uh, he was, even in today's um, Christian culture, Smith Wigglesworth is revered and honored as a man of faith. But when he started in the ministry, there was a series of events that happened to him. He was an illiterate plumber in England, and he um, was not saved and did not, you know, inspire to the things of God. Uh, his wife Polly did, but he did not. And the story has it that Mr. Wigglesworth uh, was attacked with appendicitis. And there was a, a woman and her son that lived next door to them. And uh, this little boy came over to pray for Mr. Wigglesworth. And all he knew was everything that would steal, kill, and destroy was of the devil. And what Jesus brought was abundant life. So when Polly, Mr. Wigglesworth's wife, asked the young boy to come and pray for her husband, he came over and he jumped on top of Mr. Wigglesworth and hit him in the stomach and said, Devil, you come out of Mr. Wigglesworth in Jesus' name. Well, his wife had called the doctor. The doctor came and said he has appendicitis. I've got a few more stops to make. said, I'll come back later and fill out the death certificate because the, his appendix has ruptured and he's going to die. Well, the doctor was gone for a while, came back, and Mr. Wigglesworth was not there. He was not in the bed. And the doctor asked Polly, his wife, where he was. And he said, he's gone out to do a plumbing job. He says, well, I'll, you'll bring him back a corpse. None of that happened. It did not materialize. Because when that young boy prayed for him, he prayed with him and commanded that spirit of death to loose him and let him go and didn't mind hitting him in the stomach. So Wigglesworth came back. He was completely healed, completely alive, completely delivered. And ever since that time, when Wigglesworth, and of course he got saved and was called in the ministry, ever since that time, when he would pray for somebody that had appendicitis or some kind of stomach issue, he would just imitate what that young boy did that delivered him and set him free. He would hit him in the stomach <laughs> and command the demon to come out in the name of Jesus. Now, that was early in his ministry. You know, just like everybody, he soon learned that every sickness and disease is not a demon. Everything that is wrong with people is not a devil. And, and the devil is not behind every situation that you may face. Many times he is, but many times he is not. So you have to discern. You have the gift of the discerning of spirits available to you, 1 Corinthians 12. Um, you can discern uh, both the spirit of God, the spirit of the devil. You can discern good and evil. So when you discern where the source is, what the source is uh, for your trouble, then you act accordingly. So Mr. Wigglesworth would hit people in the stomach when he had uh, to pray for, for people. He did that so much that the people in England, <laughs> in that little community uh, where he lived, uh, he hit one lady in the stomach one time when she wanted prayer. <laughs> and it was so funny. He hit her in the stomach and she looked back at him and said, oh, that's the way it's going to be, eh? And hit him back. <laughs> so you have to discern uh, whether it's a demon or whether it's not. Sometimes it's just healing. Sometimes if you're facing a financial crisis, it could be counseling. Sometimes if you're facing a, a strife situation, it's forgiveness. Every situation requires an antidote from the scriptures, but you have to find out uh, how to deal with every situation. You don't pray the same with every person. Jesus didn't. Jesus prayed with a man one time and he spit in his eyes. And, and 
you know, rubbed it in his eyes and said, uh, can you see? He was blind. Next time he spit on the ground and made clay a spittle and made a, you know, mud and spit in his eyes. He never prayed the same way twice, uh, even with people that needed deliverance. Uh, and, he, you know, he didn't make a habit out of any of the ways that he ministered. Uh, he didn't make a habit of commanding demons to reveal themselves and name themselves. He only did that one time. So you have to find out uh, from the Holy Spirit how to pray for this situation. But now in confronting the devil, you need to know uh, who you are confronting. Because many times, and we read it the other day in uh, the law of double reference, many times you're dealing with a ruler, an individual, a person, a human. And this person may be influenced by the devil. It may be possessed by the devil. It may be obsessed with, by the devil or demon spirits. A very few people, if any, are possessed by the devil himself. But many are possessed or oppressed or suppressed, depressed, with demon spirits. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 and let's find out what the Word of God says. The Apostle Paul is ministering here and he says, Finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Or what are wiles, W-I-L-E-S? What are wiles? Uh, wiles, uh, according to the scripture, are schemes, plots, plans. These are schemes that Satan has cooked up and used to try and deceive people, usually to believe the wrong thing. So put on the whole armor of God that it may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, that's probably the first thing you should be imprinted with and realize. People are not your enemies. You are not wrestling against flesh and blood. But according to the law of double reference, you could be ministering, uh, you could be uh, harassed by a demon spirit that's operating through, through a human person. That person is possessed of the devil. That person has a demon. It could be a person that is being influenced, that is being oppressed, depressed, possessed. You got to watch out for the word possessed because the word possession means ownership. I've seen lots of Christians that are obsessed, oppressed, depressed, suppressed, but very few Christians, if they're a true Christian, a real Christian, born again, are possessed by the devil or a demon spirit because the word possess means ownership. You can't be possessed and owned by the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the devil at the same time. Many arguments rise where people argue whether a Christian can have a devil or not, but you have to define the word possessed. I've cast demon spirits that actually talked out of the person, just like in the Bible, that were born again, even spirit-filled Christians. But they weren't possessed. They were oppressed, obsessed, suppressed, depressed. And the difference, big difference being, possession means ownership in the spirit. And born again Christians cannot be possessed in their spirit and have the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the devil at the same time. That's a spiritual hulk. That's, that's a, a not possible scripturally. But what happens to most Christians when they have problems with demonic influences or demonic activity is they become obsessed. You, you got to remember uh, to think a thought, to think a wrong thought is not sin. Everybody has thoughts. Satan comes to put thoughts in everybody's mind. The sin, the thought itself is not sin. But if you meditate on the thought long enough, you will actually commit the sin. Uh, and when you commit that act, that is sin. Then you have sinned. But the thought itself is not sin. 
but you want to guard your thoughts because if you don't guard your mind and guard your thoughts, Satan puts those thoughts in there and tries to get you to believe them. If you believe them, you meditate on them. If you meditate on them long enough, you'll wind up doing them. And that's when you sin. So you discern, what is this that I'm wrestling against? The Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. People are not your enemies. People are not your problem. But against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So let's take it one by one. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. What are principalities? Uh, the principalities are the magistrates, judges. They could be the president of a country. They could be uh, the prince of a country. Uh, they could be high authorities in government. So a lot of times you're wrestling against principalities. You're not wrestling so much against a leader or an individual, but you're wrestling against, fighting against the principality that's behind that leader. If you study the history of world governments, you study the history of America, if you study the history of China, Russia, uh, Germany, if you study the history of all these nations, you'll find that there were magistrates, judges, there were leaders, there were presidents, uh, princes, queens, kings that were demonically inspired. And they made bad decisions and bad choices uh, for themselves and for the whole nation. So you're wrestling against principalities. A lot of times um, we think it's the person that is our enemy or our problem. When it is really not, it's really a principality that's ruling through the person. There are a lot of dictators in this world. Uh, Mao Zedong, he, he killed 60 million of his own people. That's a principality. And it's operating through an individual that's controlling a nation. Then it says, you're uh, wrestling against principalities, against powers. What are powers? Governments. They are governors or magistrates over a region. Could be a state. Uh, these are powers that are ungodly. Uh, let, let's take Haiti, for example. In Haiti, that little nation that is suffering so much right now because of gangs that have taken over. Those are powers. They are powers that are ruling and reigning over the nation and over the people. And there's all kinds of gang activity. There's all kinds of um, illicit activity. There's all kinds of criminal activity. There's killing. There's death, etc. That is a power. And those powers hold that nation in a deadlock. They're controlling that nation. And when you have weak governments, when you have fearful or ignorant Christians, a power comes in and takes over uh, that nation or that city or that state or a family. You know, we've had powers in, in America. Uh, we've had uh, 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 mob rule. We've had mafia. We've had uh, gangsters. We've had all kinds of things, criminal element. Uh, you've also had families. These are not necessarily crime families. These are families that are wealthy and they control the wealth. They control the economy. They control the laws. They control the politicians. Those are powers and they operate according to their own lusts, their own dictates. So you have to know what you're dealing with. You're dealing with powers. Then it says, against the rulers of darkness of this world. The rulers of darkness, what would that be, Pastor Caldwell? The rulers of darkness would be, let's just take an area of darkness where there's very little light. Let's take gambling. Let's take abortion. Let's take prostitution. Let's take uh, alcoholism. Let's take drugs. 
and you just go on down the list. These are areas where the rulers of the darkness uh, of this world, they are ruling these areas of darkness. When you expose these errors, these areas of darkness, the rulers of darkness, the light of the glorious gospel comes in and reveals the darkness. And you know, you're dealing with demon spirits that want to control through these areas of darkness. Uh, drug addiction, prostitution. Today it's called uh, uh, human slavery or uh, slavery, sex slaves or some kind of dominant uh, force uh, exercised on people. Areas of darkness where there's no light, there's no revelation, there's no knowledge of the truth and they hold these areas in darkness. Those are demon spirits. Now all you see is the drug cartels or the drug lords or uh, the people involved, gambling, etc. You only see the people, the human element. You don't see the spirits that are behind uh, those, those people. And you have to deal with the spirits in intercessory prayer. You begin to intercede for those people. Starvation, uh, hunger, uh, war. You have to deal with those things in prayer. Do you have the right to do that? Yes, you do. You have the right to confront Satan and to tell him to loose those people. Let them go. Uh, pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth to them. Take the blinders off of the people's eyes so they can see the truth, so they can hear the truth, so they can know the truth. And the knowledge of the truth makes them free. Then he goes on and he says, after uh, the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places or wicked spirits. Uh, wicked spirits in high places or in heavenly places. You have certain, you've heard the term drug lords, and that's, of course, referring to uh, a drug kingpin in the, in, the, in the natural. But there are drug lords in the spiritual that rule and reign uh, over these situations. And, of course, and then there's also the, the different uh, manifestations and actions of white magic, black magic. There's evil spirits and there's Satanism and there's spiritism and so forth. And, and when you're praying, you have to understand uh, what you're dealing with. And if you have some kind of inkling and the Holy Spirit reveals things to you, they begin to pray in that direction and pull those things down. Now, let me make a distinction here. For years, we've heard people talk about pulling down strongholds. But a stronghold is not a demon. A stronghold is a, a, a mental, um, how would I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a wrong thought that has entered into your mind that keeps you bound. It's a stronghold because it has a strong hold on your memory, your mental capacity, uh, on your ability to make decisions, wrong thoughts, wrong ideas, wrong concepts. And that stronghold has to be pulled down. It's a, it's a wrong thought that's entered into the mind. It's not necessarily a demon spirit. A lot of the problems that people have today is not necessarily demons. It's a wrong thought that enters the mind and it becomes lodged there and it becomes a strong man. Let me go over to 2 Corinthians and show you what the scripture says. Go to, go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and let's listen to what the Apostle Paul uh, says to the Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, it echoes Ephesians 6. Uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What did Ephesians say? We're not fighting against uh, human people. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not for carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
a stronghold, a wrong thought entered into the mind. Reasonings. Uh, casting down imaginations or reasonings and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What your job is, is to pull down the strongholds, bring the wrong thoughts, the imaginations that are contrary to the scriptures down, cast them down. Say, I cast that thought down. I cast that thought down because it's not a thought of God. It's not Bible, and I, and I want it gone. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bring in the, the, the biblical, the Bible thought, the scriptural thought. Bring in the spiritual thought. Don't entertain the, the wrong thoughts. When Satan comes and starts putting thoughts in your mind, you cast them down so they can't become a stronghold. And you replace that with the Word of God. No, this is what the Bible says, Satan. Oh, you're going to lose your mind. No, the Bible says I have the mind of Christ. Uh, oh, you're going to die young. No, the Bible says with long life I'll satisfy you. So you see what you do? You, you cast down the stronghold that's gained a footing in your mind and you replace it with a, a, a Bible a truth, a Bible verse. So what are you doing? You are uh, casting these thoughts down and you are confronting Satan. You might say you're arguing, fighting with him, but on, his, on your terms, not his terms. You're not dealing with people. You're dealing with the demon spirits. And once you learn to do that, you're going to have tremendous success in confronting Satan. Thank you for joining me. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on X at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.